Well, it is uh, just about 9 o'clock in the morning. It is, uh, well, it's a little after 9, I should say. So it's 9 hours and 9 minutes into the day of Wednesday, November 4th, 2020. We are still within the election. And it looks like, from what I've been reading on Twitter and from all these a, n a number of different sources, it looks like that we're going to end up going to the Supreme Court to the for the final decision. Uh, they're going to battle it up. They, they've got their lawyers, lawyers all lined up. It's basically uh, Donald Trump against George Soros. Uh, Biden has nothing to do with this. Biden, is, Biden uh, for those of you who, who, who are looking into the personality of politics, uh, Biden, like Justin Trudeau, they say, well, we'll get rid of Justin Trudeau. It will solve our problem. Well, no, because Trudeau was simply a hireling. And there's a dozen, there, there's, there, well, I would say there's thousands of where Justin Trudeau came from. Because anyone who wants to get paid will step into the job. And, I mean, that's what Obama did. He's now uh, CEO of Netflix. And how do I know this? How do I know that, 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 that sending someone up as a CEO is how he gets paid for being uh, the puppet of a particular billionaire? Well, this is what they've done to uh, one of my friends who was a liberal uh, MP. Um... He went from uh, city council to uh, to to, uh, to an, an Ontario MPP, and the party decided that they didn't want him in a seat anymore. Uh, they wanted to shift up the, the sort of their demographics, and he wasn't appropriate for the demographics. And so they said, "Okay, well, here you can have this company here." And they set him up a nice little company. It doesn't make any money. And every year they get money from government contracts and so on and so forth, just like uh, we and all these other things. Like, like Hunter Biden got this, got these uh, contracts to with Burisma and stuff like that. It, they're all they're all payments. They're all you know these speaking tours, the books. The, and the thing is, oh, Michelle Obama's book is amazing. Well, yeah, but then the thing is, she didn't write it. <laughs> Somebody else wrote it. And of course. It was mostly, it was her story, though. Well, no, mostly, it was mostly her story. But what happens is that, <laughs> and this is how you reimagine things. How do you reimagine an author who doesn't write their own book? Well, you use a ghost writer. And the ghost writer is a really nice writer, a really good writer. And they make in, what they call embellishments. <laughs> right? <laughs> You expand on the talents and the interest in the story. Just a bit. Just a bit. You reimagine things. And that's how you get a bestseller. Oh, I didn't know she went through that. Or oh, she did this or that. But that may not necessarily be true. Uh, it, this is what you call infotainment. You know, there is the information aspect, but it's also written for entertainment purposes. So there might be... Uh, an extra fudge here or there, some fiction in it to just to spice things up a little bit, make it more entertaining. So it's infotainment. Yes, there's information there, but it's also entertaining. And the number of people who who who, who go with who kind of fall for this, is, and that's what it is. And, and, and others will sit back, and, and this is where you talk about the matrix. Other people in the matrix will go back and say, "Well, how can they? How can they be fooled like that?" But yet they themselves are still within the matrix. And this is what Lionel LeBron doesn't understand. He's still within the matrix. He's just in a different section of the matrix. Just because you're, you're woke doesn't necessarily mean you're out of the matrix. You can still be woke and into another another part of the matrix. You just, you know, went from one point to another point. You moved. You shifted, but you didn't leave the matrix. You're still within it. And the argument goes as simple as this. If you have to take a pill to get out of the matrix, then you've never actually left the matrix. Outside the matrix is there naturally without the pill. If you need a blue pill or a red pill to do whatever you want to do, you're still within the matrix. You haven't left the matrix. You're still in there. You're still part of the game. And more often than not, most people are pawns. Like I talked before, there are some very religious Jews who, who believe in in Judaism completely. They 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 they, they, 
This is, the, as a matter of fact, it becomes their lifeblood. But there are those who pretend to be Jews, who say, well, we're, we're basically Canaanites, but uh, we'll use your Judaism as a cover, and they're the ones who cause a large chunk of the problems, particularly in the banking system. And when things go south, they, they hit the road and leave the, uh, the, the good old Jews, the good old, uh, you know, the religious people to take the, to take the fall. You know, leaving, leaving, leaving them holding the bag, so to speak. And that's, you know, that's what the Holocaust was. You, you go look, you, you find, you'll find pictures of George Soros in a Nazi uniform. You'll find his dad in a Nazi uniform. The, 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 the inventor of the gas that killed Jews in the, in the, in the gas chambers, that was done by a Jew named, uh, named, named Haber. He's a French Jew. Uh, so what happens is that you, you, but then you get, get well, again, yeah, I need to correct myself because this is where a lot of people get in there. Oh, you're talking about all the Jews and how they're to blame for it. Well, not necessarily because it's not necessarily the Jews themselves. It's the people who are of Jewish descent who decided no longer they are no longer Jews, but they are now, well, socialists. They're atheists. They don't believe in anything. They believe in the state. And this is the way it was for 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 uh, 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 for Lenin, Vladimir Lenin, you know, of the of the uh, of the revolution. You know, same thing for uh, uh, I think Trotsky was Jewish as well, uh, or, or of Jewish descent. The funders behind the Russian Revolution were uh, were Jewish or of Jewish, Jewish descent. Uh, you'll find this the same thing with the, with the, kind, the Chinese communism. The backers of people who funded um, uh, Mao, you'll find them out of New York and uh, Yale. So it, 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 when you look into history and see what actually goes on in history, you begin to realize there's something more significant there. But at all the same time, you begin to see that there's a lot of people who are just what they call sheeple. The number of people who are sheeple who are being tossed and herded from one side to the other is phenomenal. Case in point, Watch the stock market. Go watch the news on the stock market. Oh, someone farted in the wrong direction. There's a sell-off. Someone farted in the air, in the right direction. People are buying again. The market's going crazy. Why? Because they're being herded. People are being treated like cattle. And you, and someone spooks them at one end, they run the other direction. Someone spooks them on the other end, they run in the opposite direction. Back, back towards the other, and then they do it back and forth, back and forth, back. This is how wolves hunt. This is this is how the pack works. You, you do that until someone gets tired, and the person who gets tired and can't run anymore, then you go attack them, you eat, attack and eat them. That's, that's kind of how this works. And it is, it is not, it's not specific to the left. It's part of the general nature of human beings Initially, is to be of that of that nature. You have to, look, but but you have to if if you want. There are means and a path to pull yourself out of that. But it's not easy. Anyways, back to my meditation. I'm increasing my meditation again. So uh, uh, that's where I'm going back to now. It is Wednesday, November 5th. It is four hours and 52 minutes into the day of Wednesday, November 5th. Uh, we're still waiting for election results. Uh, it looks like this is was predicted by Lionel LeBron, and this is what I had suspected as well, that the U.S. election is being stolen uh, by the Democrats. Uh, there is enough evidence out there to, that points to this. And it said even people who aren't even voting, they're not... They're, and watching that said something's going on, they, you know, because they noticed that the, the number of people, the number of Trump voters who were being intimidated, and also all these so-called peaceful protesters were burning things down to the ground. This isn't this isn't something that this isn't um, encouraging uh, 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 of Trump supporters. If you're going to be beaten up, or you're going to be shot or killed or attacked or whatever, simply because you're a Trump voter, that doesn't that that means 
you're going to be afraid to go to the polls. You're going to be afraid to vote. And of course, how did this happen? How did the, the, the election get stolen? All of a sudden, all these absentee ballots are now making the difference. What did they say? The election was going to be stolen by absentee ballots, by mail-in ballots. This was exactly, it, it, it was predicted way out in front. And historically, this has been the case as well, is, it, is that the voter fraud is, isn't something that's new. But what happens is when someone comes up, they, they come out and tell you this. And, and it's completely ignored. But again, again, who's paying for the press? You know, the press get have, are, are, are on a payroll. And the thing is, if people are handing out nice uh, 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 cars and, you know, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car, uh, then they're going to play ball with whoever's paying the, the largest amount of money. And the establishment wanted Donald Trump out because Donald Trump is not establishment. I mean, that's the only, the only reason why I voted for Trump is because he was an establishment. <laughs> I'm not an establishment person, and that's the sort of thinking about this. Is, you know, I took the day off on Wednesday and basically slept all day. But the thing is, is that it 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 was the standard sleep I typically have. I just didn't get out of bed for anything particular, uh, and so I I I'd wake up, mull through things over again, mull mull things over, go back to sleep, mull things over, and actually I was able to continue several of the dreams. And I realized that there's a lot of misunderstanding out there in terms of the issue of the matrix and the so-called anti-establishment. The establishment itself is the establishment itself isn't one group; it's multiple groups, and it really depends on who you attach yourself to uh, that you're going to become a minion of that establishment. And a lot of people do this; they do attach themselves to particular groups, and uh, they become minions and. Ironically enough, even if you if you get a somewhat important position in in, in the uh, as a minion in the organization of the establishment, uh, you'll guard that uh, position jealously. It's it's it, it's it's actually fought over. Uh, I've seen this. I've seen people. You know, in the Christian church. They, you have uh, a sort of a uh, a popular priest or a uh, uh, someone who is claiming authority. Uh, you cling to the person, you sort of rally around the person, and you're happy with whatever position you get. As soon as someone new comes in, oh boy, there's going to be fireworks. Why? Because the new person, let's say if the new person is very good at what they do. Not perfect, but very good. You're going to get. You're gonna make sure there's going to be a lot of complaints. Why? Because the people who are already in the position who may not, who may feel threatened by this new guy... Because, well, if he's good, what's going to happen to my position? Is my position going to change? Am I going to lose my position? And these thoughts all through, go through their minds, and it becomes obsessive. And this is sort of the same thing with an issue of selfishness, of believing that you are entitled to things. And I hear this. I hear this from, not from one or two people. This is from one. I hear it from a lot of people. And why are people upset about illegal aliens? Well, they're taking my job. They're getting an education. When I didn't get an education, I had to work for... And they tell you how hard they worked and what they had to do and how their life was hard and so on and so forth. And these people are robbing the blind. They're not looking at other, these other issues that maybe who, where the person came from, how they got to where they're going, uh, what they had to do to get there. They see it from their own perspective. And so what happens is they go out and attack these illegal aliens as if they're the problems. They're not, again, they don't blame themselves for their problems. In other words, they didn't go to school or didn't finish school. Uh, they were offered education, but they turned it down. They were, you know, why, do, why does this guy get to go to university when I didn't get to go to, get to, go to university? Well, did you turn down an opportunity to go to university? If you were given an opportunity but didn't do anything, I mean, in other words, you know, they got in but didn't do the reading, didn't do the writing. In other words, didn't complete things. They did part of the work but never finished anything. 
And you'll see this. Because what, what happens is they go from situation to situation and, and the things that occur in the situation in the situation always occurs to them. It's being done to them. Well, I'm in a class. And I got that F because not because I didn't finish the work or didn't hand it in completely at all. It's because the teacher's against me. The professor's against me. He got that, the other guy over there, he's uh, not as smart as I am. I know I'm, I'm smarter than he is. Yet he got a better grade than I did. These are the people of entitlement. And this is what you see particularly from the Democratic left, but also at the same time, uh, you see this in the Republican right as well. It's a, it, it, it's a feeling of entitlement that you, that you are owed something because you are special. And the thing is, is, it, is it, 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 it's on both sides. Of this, and this is why I said the, the, how you define establishment really depends on who you're looking at. Uh, there is a Jewish establishment. But there are people, there are different, uh, within the Jewish establishment, there are multiple establishments within the Jewish establishment. There is the Sephardic Jews, there is the Hasidic Jews, there is the, there are the Jews from, uh, from, Brook, from, from Brooklyn. Uh, there's an, there, and even within the within them, it depends on the school you're in. Right, the school defines in, in in Judaic law the school, and the rabbi at the head of the school defines what a Jew is. And so what happens is in a particular a particular school of 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 Judaica, uh, you have to in order to be a Jew, you have to meet their definition, and that definition can change slightly from from school to school to school to the point where they're not in, in communication with each other. They're, they're in competition with each other over who is the better Jew, who is more orthodox, who follows the law, the law the best, who understands the law the best. And this is, this is again, arguing over position. It's about entitlements there. And yet, there are, it gets to this point because you have people who will follow them. Just like in the Christian church, you have a bishop or a priest or... or so on and so forth, or, or a chanter who becomes uh, very popular and everyone groups around him. And you can have an established order and then someone new comes in, why does everyone freak out? Because they're afraid the established order is going to change. That's what establishment means. Established order. When something new comes in that threatens that order, and that's what Christ, you see, let me tell you what I said, Christ was anti-establishment. Why was Christ executed? It's not because the Jews believed he was God. It's because he threatened their authority. He threatened their establishment. He was saying, oh, you don't need to have this authority here. He says, we're all brothers and sisters. You can't have one authority over another. A brother can't rule over another brother, or a sister can't rule over another sister. And he brought in what we call our first sense of equality, human equalness. But the thing is, that was that's what the whole, this is the origin of philanthropy. The origin of philanthropy comes from Christ. And it's for all human beings. And the philanthropy is for all human beings. And this is where we get our term man from. Uh, in Greek, there's two different uh, types of man. There's anthropos. Anthropos is the uh, species of man. And andras is the gender of man. And so what happens when you're talking about philanthropos, right? philanthropy, you're talking about... Um, uh, the love of, of humankind, the, 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 the kindness of humankind. And you become the physician to that. You go there to make sure that they're healed, if they're sick or hurt. Or, and that's what the whole thing of, uh, of the Good Samaritan, Christ didn't go in as a, 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 an enlightened Jew or as a Pharisee. Uh, he allowed those other people to pass by and uh, because, because there was a Jewish man on the side of the road. And he is a Samaritan who is the lowest of the low. These people were untouchable in the uh, Jewish sense of, uh, of uh, kosherness. And certain things in kosher cannot be touched, cannot be uh, dealt with, and you have to move away from them. And this, this Jewish man who was robbed and beaten was in a situation where uh, he was no longer kosher. And so they move, you see, the re you see these other Jews moving to the other side, but here comes the lowest person, an untouchable the Samaritan who comes and attends to the person. And this is what you see throughout the Gospel. If you read the Gospel carefully, you begin to understand that, that Christ was 
was basically threatening their establishment. And at the end, what they did is they, you know, uh, it, 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 you know, the first week they they brought him in as Hosanna, uh, King of the Jews, and the next week they were crucifying. Again, he had a whole bunch of people around us. So yeah, support him. It, this this is Christ our King. This is truly the Christ. And the next week, they crucified him. This is the nature of establishment. And this is also the nature of anti-establishment. Anything that goes against or threatens establishment, like Donald Trump did, uh, gets attacked. So the question for Antifa and Black Lives Matter, are you indeed anti-establishment, anti or are you simply minions for the establishment, pretending to be anti-establishment? 